In today's video, we'll talk about something called the leading coefficient test for polynomials. Now, it's not that hard for me to tell you what this is, but I think it needs a little bit of lead up. We'll have to address some of the vocabulary involved in it, and then I can tell you what it is, and it's fairly simple at that point. Okay, so but it does say it's the leading coefficient test for polynomials. So let's let's first talk about what a polynomial is. So this is a polynomial, okay? And these are also polynomials. Now notice I didn't tell you what a polynomial is, like say if you looked it up in a book or something like that. I just gave some examples. But all right, what do these examples have in common and what's a polynomial? A polynomial is an algebraic expression that has whole number powers on the variable, okay? So like that's a five is the power, and then on that term a two is a power, and here, what's the power on that? It's a one, and a two, and a one, and a four. So in every single example here, the exponent, the power on the variable is always a whole number, a positive whole number. There's no negative powers. There's no roots of any kind, okay? And then also on some of them we have a, a constant, like one here and one there. So you might have a constant term also. But nonetheless, those are examples of a polynomial. That's what it looks like, okay? If you want it written out and say a polynomial, all exponents on the variable are positive whole numbers. So that's basically what I told you, but it's probably easier to just see the example. So that's why I showed it to you that way, okay? So let's talk about a little more vocabulary. So take this polynomial right here. So five times x to the seventh power minus two x plus nine. That's a polynomial. The exponent on every variable there is a positive whole number. That's why it's a polynomial. Now, if you look at this term right here, that's called the leading term. Uh, it's not the leading term because it's the first one as you read it from left to right. It's the leading term because it has the largest exponent, okay? The largest exponent is also called the degree of the polynomial. So I might say that this polynomial has a degree of 7. That's the highest power. All right, but nonetheless, this is the leading term, and there's two things <clears throat> I want you to notice about it. That 5 right there, that's the coefficient of the variable, meaning it's 5 times x to the 7th power. 5 would be the leading coefficient, okay? And of that leading term, 7 is the exponent, all right? So you've got a polynomial. You can identify the leading term, and then you can notice on top of that the leading coefficient and the exponent, all right? Okay, so... Here's what we can tell from that. Just by looking at the leading term, we can tell what the graph looks like. All right? So look at this example. So there's a polynomial. There's the leading term. And I want you to notice that the leading coefficient is negative. The coefficient of the leading term happens to be negative. And I just want you to notice that, okay? And I want you to notice that the exponent is even, all right? So here's what that tells us. Anytime the leading term has a negative coefficient and an even exponent, the graph will look something like this, okay? And what I'm trying to say by this picture is that it will rise on both sides. In the middle, I can't say, all right? It might be like wavy up and down in the middle. But I can tell that if the leading coefficient is negative and the exponent is even, then that's like the broad overall shape of the graph, okay? So that's the kind of thing that we can tell from the leading term. All right, now I know that like the first time I would tell you this, it might seem that it just comes out of nowhere. But let me summarize everything that you could tell from the leading term in one place, all right? Okay, so here it goes. Here's every possibility. So say you look at the leading term, 
and it has a positive coefficient and an odd exponent. That'd be like this one. So the coefficient is 6, that's positive, and the exponent is 5, that's an odd number. Okay? Then the graph will look like this. It will fall on the left and rise on the right. The middle, it might wave up and down. It might be complicated in there. But I know that it will fall on the left and rise on the right. Okay? All right, so like this one. It's going to look something like that. We'll, we'll, have, we'll sort out the middle maybe some, by plotting some points or something like that. What are the other possibilities? We'll say that the leading term has a negative coefficient and an odd exponent. Oh, so like that one right there. See this one? So there's the leading term. The coefficient is negative and the exponent's odd. So that means it'll look like this. It will rise on the left and fall on the right. See, rise on the left, fall on the right. In the middle, it might, might be wavy, might be more complicated, but that's what it looks like at the ends, okay? All right, two more possibilities. Say the leading term has a positive coefficient and an even exponent. That would be like this one. See, there's the coefficient of the leading term. It's 4. That's positive. And then the exponent's 8. That's even. Okay? All right. So that will look like this. It will rise on both sides. Rise on the left, rise on the right. Again, the middle, I can't say. And then the last case, say that the leading term has a negative coefficient and an even exponent. So to give an example, that would be like... negative 3x squared plus 1, okay? Here's the leading term. That coefficient's negative, and the exponent is 2, which is even. So it's going to look like this. It's going to fall to the left and fall to the right, okay? So all you do, if you notice these four possibilities, okay, when you have a polynomial, look at the leading term and decide if the leading coefficient is positive or negative, and if the exponent is even or odd, okay? So that's how you think about it, all right? So if I was going to give you this one, say f of x is equal to negative 2x to the third power plus 4x squared plus 2x minus 4, okay? That right there, that term with the highest power, that's the leading term, And then you just look at this, the exponent, and you decide, is it odd or even? And that leading coefficient, you decide if it's positive or negative. And it should be easy for you to tell both of those. The exponent, odd or even. The coefficient, positive or negative. That's what you do. And then from there, it's going to fall into one of these four possibilities. Okay? And then you can decide the broad, general shape of the graph from there. So let's look at an example. Okay? All right. So let's say that you had to know something about a graph. So in math and science and engineering, we like graphs because it's something that we can see and it summarizes a lot of information in one place. Okay? So let's just think about what a graph is in general and then what we could tell about the shape from what I just told you. So say we got this example to draw this graph, okay? The graph of negative 2x to the third plus 4x squared plus 2x minus 4. So let's think about this. First of all, what is a graph in the first place? A graph is just lots of points. Like if I made a table of x's and y's, those would be points, and I'll put some points on the table, and some of those points might give us a pattern, a visual pattern that we can see. The more points we put on a table or on a picture, the more obvious the pattern can be. So here's what I did. If I wanted to draw the graph of this, then I would just choose lots of points, like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and then after I started plotting these numbers, I decided I need to squeeze a 1.5 in there, 2, and 3. So those are just, you know, a broad survey of numbers, okay? I plotted some points from negative 2 to 3. I plugged in these x's into that equation, 
and I got the y's, and together x and y makes a point. Here I started to draw the picture, like x being negative 2 and y being 24. That's this one. x being negative 1, y being 0. That's this one. And you see there's kind of a shape there. It sort of looks like it might go like this, right? So what did I say a graph was? It's just a pattern. You just plot enough points until some pattern becomes obvious to you. Now, all right. Now, from here, though, like, I don't know. Like, after that point, what's it do? Does it go down like this? Does it go up over here somewhere? What does it do when you go that way? And you see this point? Does it, like, go and wander back up that direction? I don't know. You see what I'm trying to say? I only have so many points. If I kept, like, drawing from there, you know, I don't have any more points. I could be wrong what happens outside of these points or in between them. So I want some way to know what the shape is supposed to be. In addition to having some points and being able to see a little bit about the pattern, I want to know what it's supposed to look like. Okay, all right, so here's what we can do. See this right there? Here's what we've learned from it, okay? We can look at the leading term. There it is, right? And I notice it has a negative coefficient and an odd exponent. The coefficient's negative two, that's negative. The exponent is three, that's odd. And what did we say that's supposed to mean? Remember when I went through this chart, I say, the exponent is odd or even, and the coefficient's positive or negative. There were all these possibilities that I showed you. Well, in that case, the shape must be like this. That was what was on that table that I showed you. It's going to rise to the left and fall to the right. So I, I could say that, well, from here, it probably does go off in that direction, upward. It says that it's going to rise on the left. And from this point, it probably does continue to fall off in that direction because it says it falls to the right. That's what the leading term tells us, all right? So just by looking at this, and I could ignore the rest of it. You know, the rest of that does not have any effect on the broad picture, it turns out. Just from that, I know it has to rise on the left and fall on the right. Now, those points in the middle there, these points that you see, that sorted out this question mark. You know, what happens in the middle? I don't know. But this table and those points sort that out. So here's the pattern I see in addition to what the leading term tells me the graph is supposed to look like, okay? Uh, so it looks like it's going to kind of wave in here through these up and down. Uh, it's going to go down forever like that on the right. And it's going to rise up forever like this on the left. Okay, yes. Yeah, so my points, you saw them. Now I've drawn through the points, the pattern that they indicate. And in addition to that, it's rising on the left and falling on the right. Just like something with that leading term would supposed to do. Okay. All right. So hopefully that allows you to see the big picture. There's, there's two sides to the whole story. One is that the leading term tells us the general shape and that points calculated on a table and drawn on a picture can tell us the more specific details.